Hi, I'm Dean Rod Berry. In this video, I'm going to give you tips on how to answer law school examinations. Stay tuned. Hello again. If you're new to this channel, please like, share, and subscribe. It'll help my channel grow. And the best of all, it's free. Every law student dreads midterms and finals. It's a day they can't sleep. It's a day they can't eat. It's a day they can't talk to their parents or their friends. Law school exams are hard. But just note and remember that it's only four times in a school year. Two midterms and two finals in two semesters. Tip number one, when you get the exam or the test paper, don't panic. Relax, read the instructions, make sure you follow them carefully to the letter. Then have an overview of the questions. See what sort of topics are involved in the questions. Are they beyond what the coverage was or are they within the coverage? Before you start answering the questions, read them all. Map it out. Also, look at the points per question. Are they 5 questions of 20 points each or are they 20 questions of 5 points each? Or the normal one would be 10 questions at 10 points each. Tip number two, once you see the number of questions, set a timetable. Give yourself an allotted time per question, whether it be one minute per question, five minutes per question, as long as you reach within the exam time limit, whether it be two hours, three hours, or even sometimes one hour. Why do you do this? You will be allowed to have at least a watch during exam time, maybe not a phone. So set your time, know your time frame, you have a five minutes per question or six minutes per question, then make small notes on a test paper and see where you cut off on the time. For example, from 1 o'clock to 105, question number one, from 106 to 110, question number two, and so forth and so on. It is sort of a time management per the exam. That way you know that how many minutes you have left over for the harder questions. Which brings me to tip number three. Once you have the overview of the questions, map out or check out which are the hardest for you to answer then answer them first answer the questions that are easy or at least you know the answer to last some people do it the other way around but answering the harder questions first giving the most time to it you know that when it comes down to the easier questions you already know the answer you already know how to explain them and therefore you only need maybe one or two minutes for the easy question for example if there are 10 questions Answer the five hardest first and the five easiest later. Tip number four, answer the question and not your questions. In my experience, some law students fall into this trap. Look at the questions. Know what they're asking and know what they're looking for. For example, if the question is about damages due to the fault of the debtor, don't answer as if it's about delay or breach of contract answer specifically for example in criminal law if the question is about exempting circumstance don't answer anything about justifying circumstance don't mix your answers the professor wants you to know and wants to check whether you know the issue of the question look for the issue and answer that issue only tip number five answer the question directly if it's a yes or no answer yes or no have it in the first two lines of your answer don't put it in the second part the professor would want to see that you know the answer right away then explain if you write the explanation first the professor will have to look for the answer tip number six do not add facts in the question do not add anything beyond the question when you answer the question think of horse blinders do not go beyond the scope of the question Another trap that some students fall into when answering questions is they put general assumptions. Don't do that. For example, if the question is about delay, don't add, well, it's always traffic in Metro Manila or always traffic where I'm from, therefore that's what the cause of the delay. If, it, if they are not part of the facts of the problem, don't put them in issue. Tip number seven, be consistent in your reference. If the facts of the case or the facts of the problem are 100% similar to the 
case that you know, then you can cite the case. B field versus blank or A versus B. If you're not sure, just say jurisprudence states or jurisprudence says so. It's about the law. You can cite the general name for the law, such as the revised penal code, the civil code, or the intellectual property code. If you try to cite the Republic Act number and you make a mistake, the professor will fault you for it. It's better to give them the popular name rather than the actual law number. And here is the eighth and most important tip. Try to answer your essays in six or seven lines, no more than that. A professor wants to see that you can answer the simplest and the quickest way as possible. But make sure it's the correct answer. If they see a 10 line or a 12 line answer, they will think that you don't know the answer and you're just going around in circles. If they see a six or seven line answer, the professor will be more encouraged to read it in full rather than just look for the right phrase or answer or term in a 10 or 12 line answer. This is not high school or college. You don't need to swing around your answer in a long essay. Also, this is a good training for the bar exam. Just remember, bar examiners can check up to 10,000 booklets in, in just four months. They're going to be tired when they see that your test will have 10 to 12 lines and you're the 8,000 booklet to be answered or to be checked. Here's my bonus tip. Never answer a law school exam with it depends. That is the worst way to start off a law school exam. That means you're not giving a definitive answer. You're giving two possible answers when the professor only wants to see one. If the question demands an alternative answer, then answer that way. But if not, go straight to the point. As I said before, don't put in your essays or your answers, I think, or in my opinion, no. That's the wrong way to answer a question. The professor will mark you wrong even though you are correct. I hope you learned something from this video on how to answer law school exams. If you have any other suggestions on what other videos you want for law school advice, please put them in the comments and I'll try to do my best to make a video on that topic. This is Dean Rod Vera saying, I wish you good luck in your law school career and I hope you'll be a lawyer someday. Remember, it's not what you know, it's what they don't know. Goodbye.